when you see something that is not right, not fair, yeah. not just yeah. say something, do yeah. something. Do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? Your order to disperse this march will not contest. We gave a little blood on this bridge. Uh, not just to change Selma and Alabama, but to change America. Good Saturday morning, everybody. It is July 18th. I'm Karen Greer. While you were sleeping, another civil rights giant gone from us. Civil rights leader, U.S. Congressman John Lewis passed away at 80 years old. We're taking a look back at his life and the impact he had on the fight for equality for the nation. John Lewis wasn't afraid of battle. Nearly his entire life was dedicated to some kind of fight. We the Negro citizen of Dallas County. A crusade to redefine America's moral fiber. I'm not gonna give up. No. I'm not gonna give in. No. Lewis became synonymous with the civil rights movement in the 1960s. He was arrested at least 40 times and had his skull cracked during the Selma to Montgomery march. It is not easy uh, to be beaten and suffer the blows, uh, some of the criticism uh, to be beaten on that bridge in Selma. And, and I think about it, uh, but it didn't break the struggle. He went on to represent Georgia's fifth congressional district for more than 30 years. So I've said many times to the young people back in Georgia and around America, that when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to stand up Speak up, speak up. Lewis described his battle against stage four pancreatic cancer as a rival like none he'd ever faced. He lost the good fight at 80 years old, surrounded by his family. He was the last survivor of the big six civil rights activists, once led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He is truly a fighter and has demonstrated to be one of the greatest fighters of our time. My father certainly, uh, uh, would be very proud of the light that he illuminates uh, throughout our nation and world and the consciousness that he brings. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? We have a mission and a mandate to be on the right side of history. Lewis, the son of sharecroppers, was born in Troy, Alabama in 1940, the third of 10 children. Longtime friend and fellow civil rights activist, former Atlanta mayor and ambassador Andrew Young said his incomparable spirit we cannot give up now. will be missed, but not forgotten. Keep our eyes on the prize. He's one of the strongest, most determined, God-ordained people I know. The time for silence and patience is long gone. And he's been that way since he was a teenager. Lewis founded the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, but caught national attention when he led hundreds of protesters across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. That was 1965. We've become comfortable believing in the impossible. Undeterred by armed police officers, Lewis was knocked to the ground and beaten in what became known as Bloody Sunday. The televised images forced Americans to pay attention to racial inequality like never before. And John led that march when everybody thought it was kind of a waste of time and that we ought to give up. But he's not one who gives up. After turning to politics in the 1980s, Lewis continued to push for equality and remained active in his last years, calling for gun reform and supporting the Black Lives Matter protests. In 2011, Lewis was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama and remained true to his vision to carry on fighting for justice for all. It really doesn't matter whether we're black or white, Hispanic, Asian American, or Native American. We are one people. So let's hang in there, work hard, and do what we must do. Lewis is survived by his only child, son John Miles Lewis. I thought I was going to down this bridge. But somehow, in some way, God Almighty help me here. Yeah. His wife, Lillian Miles Lewis, preceded him in death. 
Now, Governor Brian Lewis or Governor Brian Kemp sending his condolences after the news of John Lewis's death. The governor saying a civil rights icon, freedom fighter and beloved Georgian lost his battle with cancer today. Our nation will never be the same without him. There are no words to adequately express the sadness countless Americans are feeling upon learning this news. John Lewis changed our world in profound and immeasurable ways. Former President Bill Clinton also taking to Twitter last night saying John Lewis gave all he had to redeem America's unmet promise of equality and justice for all and to create a place for us to build a more perfect union together. He says Hillary and I were blessed by his friendship, support and wise counsel. We'll miss him so much but we'll always be grateful that he lived to see a new generation of Americans take to the streets in search of his long sought beloved community. As we say goodbye to such a towering icon, people across the country and here in our state are mourning and celebrating the loss of John Lewis. They're gathering at the John Lewis mural that's right on Auburn Avenue to pay tribute. Our Haley Mason joining us from the mural, which has taken on a whole new meeting this morning. I've seen flowers and just candles, it looks like, at the foot of the mural, Haley. Good morning, Karen. This mural of Congressman John Lewis has turned into a memorial today as people in mourning have been coming out all morning long, dropping off flowers and candles and cards to honor this immeasurable life and legacy of John Lewis. I'm going to step out of the way as more people walk up to the base of this mural here on Jesse Hill Jr. Drive and Auburn Avenue to pay their respects to an incredible man and an incredible loss. We are live in the 5th Congressional District where Congressman Lewis served for almost 34 years. And I want to note, I was here at this mural when Congressman Lewis announced in December that he had stage four pancreatic cancer. And I'll note people immediately rush to this site to leave messages of support, calling on him to fight through this. And that's what he vowed to do. The city of Atlanta dedicated this mural to Lewis in 2012. It's called Hero and rightfully so in honor of Congressman Lewis. You can find it here on the west side of Renaissance Walk at the Auburn building on Jesse Hill Jr. Drive. The civil rights leader expressed how it felt to have a mural in the same place as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr the same place that he fought for equality. Martin, Lu Martin Luther King III also commented on Lewis's legacy. To have a mural dedicated to me in the heart of downtown Atlanta, in this historic district where Auburn Avenue thrived and Martin Luther King Jr. made his home, is very, very moving to me. He is truly a fighter and has demonstrated to be one of the greatest fighters of our time. My father certainly uh, uh, would be very proud of the light that he illuminates uh, throughout our nation and world and the consciousness that he brings. And he was a son of the South and a natural born leader. Uh, many people may not remember, but John Lewis was actually elected to the, to the Atlanta City Council in 1981 before he was elected to Congress in 1986 in November, where he served the 5th Congressional District here for nearly 34 years. And still today, he is a resounding voice to this community. Reporting live in downtown Atlanta, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Absolutely, Haley. So well said. Thank you. Our coverage of the passing of the civil rights leader, legend John Lewis continues right now. Our Ayani Hughes, live outside the National Center for Civil and Human Rights, also known as the Civil Rights Museum here in Atlanta, with more. Ayani, how are people responding out there this Good. morning? Good morning, Karen. Um, there's not too many people out here right now, but we do stand outside of the Civil Rights Museum here in Atlanta. This is undoubtedly uh, one of the toughest losses, but here at the Civil Rights Museum, they do have many tributes to Congressman Lewis's life and his legacy and his leadership, not only in Atlanta, but to this country. Now, uh, Mr. John Robert Lewis uh, is his full name, was a husband, he was a father, and he was a son of sharecroppers. He worked side by side with Martin Luther King 
missing and survived a brutal police beating during the landmark Bloody Sunday March in Selma, Alabama in 1965. Now, despite the beating, he never lost his sight of his activist spirit. He grew to be a towering figure of the civil rights movement. He became a member of the Atlanta City Council in 1981 and served diligently as a staple in the United States Congress. Now, throughout his time, Congressman Lewis dedicated his entire life to nonviolent activism. He was respected and outspoken leader in the ongoing battle of racial injustices and civil rights in America. Now let's take a listen from other leaders on his life. And we talked very briefly and he was sort of struggling, uh, which was kind of unusual, you know, for John. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Michael uh, informed me that uh, they were having uh, difficulties with John's health yes. and that uh, they were uncertain as to uh, what extent uh, he would be able to uh, recover. I was 17 years old and I'm standing in the back of the crowd with other students from across the South um, and I, I, you know, obviously we're waiting on Dr. King, but I saw this 23 year old young fellow standing up at the microphone and he was articulating his message. He was the youngest person on the platform, and I'll never forget that. I'm deeply sad and troubled by the way the street looked today. This is the street where we march, where we play, where we had fun, where we dance, where we attended church. And Congressman Lewis was always known as a fighter fighting the good fight, and he fought until his last breath. Unfortunately, he did die at the age of 80 from ca uh, pancreatic cancer. For now, we're live in Atlanta. Yanni Hughes, CBS 46 News. And Yanni, that center is so very special and important. It was conceived by Evelyn Lowry, the wife of Joseph Lowry, Juanita Abernathy, the widow of Ralph David Abernathy, Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young, former mayor, and Congressman John Lewis. So that is a very special place in his heart, I'm sure. Not just yeah. say something, yeah. do something. Get in Trevor, good Trevor, necessary Trevor. Oh yes, yeah. stirring words from Georgia Congressman John Lewis. That's just a piece of a new documentary chronicling his life and legacy. I've seen it three times already. It's amazing. John Lewis, a politician, a rever rever revered civil rights hero. It's called Good Trouble. And it has been released, but will be released digitally tomorrow. And we have on the phone with us someone that knows him well, knew his, his whole life, really talked to him uh, through all of this and saw him just before he died. We have on the phone with us um, former Atlanta mayor and UN ambassador Andrew Young. Good morning, Ambassador. Well, good morning. And, you know, and I, I, I started to woke up this morning with my mind on freedom. And I started thinking about the old song, It's a Great Getting Up Morning, and Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And, you know, our ancestors look forward to death, and they look forward to uh, the transition and the life beyond this. And, and they stood the sufferings of this life, knowing that we will understand it better by and by. And uh, we have a history of dealing with death. And I was fortunate in many ways because my grandmother lost her sight when I was about seven or eight years old. And I had to read the Bible to her every day, too. She died six, seven years later. And the Bible and the newspaper. And she talked about dying. And she looked forward to it. And she fussed with God for making her stay here and be a trouble. Uh, a burden on her children. Uh, and so I've, I've always had a very positive attitude about death. Dr. King used to say that death is the ultimate democracy. It's something that nobody's going to escape. Everybody's got to die. And you don't have anything to say about when you die, uh, how you die, where you die, but you can say, what is it I give my life for? And John Lewis gave his life for his, for people, for this nation, for the peoples of the world. Uh, he was very active in just about every cause from the time he was about 15 on. 
And Ambassador, you talked to him, you saw him before he died, and you and I talked about once he learned of his cancer diagnosis, he really wanted to fight this through. He did, and, and if it had not been so far gone, but I think he, he ran the race from the time he was 15 to 80, uh, and C.T. Vivian, you know, started and lasted until he was 95. So we, we, we're, we're sending two heroes on to glory, but they will still be with us uh, as Martin Luther King and Coretta and Ralph and Hosea are still with us. As we still hear the words of John Kennedy and uh, uh, even Lyndon Johnson, when you hear him say, we shall overcome, as a Texas uh, Southerner identifying not just with black people, but with the, the poor Hispanic and white kids that he taught as a teacher in the Texas Hill Country. Uh, you realize that uh, death is not an end. Death is just a transition. And so it's not a time to be sad. Uh, it's a time to celebrate really a great life, several great lives. It is, Ambassador Young, and we thank you for taking the time to talk to us about those great lives we lost within 20 hours of each other on yesterday. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay with us. We have more on the day's news ahead, plus more on the life and legacy of Georgia Congressman John Lewis. I wanted to make a contribution. I didn't like the sign that said white only, colored only. Good Saturday morning to you. We start with a live look at the Center for Civ Cent Cent Center for Civil Rights, the museum that uh, Congressman John Lewis helped to start, create it, along with some other civil rights icons. Welcome back to CBS 46 Morning News on this Saturday. I'm Karen Greer in for Megan Packer. Thank you so much for joining us. As we remember, civil rights icon and fearless freedom fighter, Congressman John Lewis. The Georgia Congressman passed away late last night at the age of 80. He served in the U.S. House of Representatives, played a critical role in the civil rights movement, and helped change history. Congressman John Lewis dedicated his life to civil rights and nonviolent activism. Your voice is your vote. Lewis was a trusted friend of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As one of the original Freedom Riders, he suffered severe beatings while challenging segregation laws. When the Civil Rights Act of 1964 met resistance in the South, Lewis and Hosea Williams led hundreds of black voters on a 54-mile march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. When we were marching across that bridge, just simple saying people wanted to register to vote wanted to participate in the democratic process. The marchers got as far as the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Turn around and disperse. And they came toward us, beating us with knife sticks, using tear gas and tramping us with horses. That day went down in history as Bloody Sunday. Two weeks later, Lewis and hundreds more, including Dr. King, completed that march to Montgomery. Lewis was born near Troy, Alabama in 1940. He attended American Baptist Theological Seminary and later graduated from Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee with degrees in religion and philosophy. He was elected chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1963, also known as SNCC. I wanted to make a contribution. I didn't like the sign that said white only, colored only. At 23, Lewis was the youngest speaker at the March on Washington, where Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech. His passion for people and racial reconciliation brought him to the halls of Congress. I'm John Lewis, running for Congress. Lewis won Georgia's 5th Congressional District in 1986. Yes, I'm proud to be a liberal Democrat. I stand with the people. He received numerous awards throughout his life, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Congressman Lewis and President Obama led thousands across the Edmund Pettus Bridge to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday in 2015. But he clashed with President Obama's successor, 
boycotting President Donald Trump's inauguration, and on the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, Lewis asked Americans to step up. When you see something that is not right, something that is not fair, something that is not just, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. A principle he lived by, earning his reputation as the conscience of the U.S. Congress. He will be missed. As we say goodbye to such a towering icon, people across the country and right here in our state are in mourning this morning. And they're gathering at the John Lewis mural that is on Auburn Avenue to pay tribute. CBS 46 is Haley Mason joining us from that mural. I'm sure you've seen it as you've gone through town. It's taking on a whole new meaning this morning, Haley. Karen, that is right. This mural turned memorial is now paying tribute to John Lewis. So many people are coming out behind me, leaving flowers, cards, uh, messages of support. Uh, one note there says our unity will not be broken just under the sign that says John Lewis civil rights icon. And there is a growing appreciation for his continued fight this morning, Karen. We're in the 5th Congressional District where this mural sits, where John Lewis served tirelessly for almost 34 years. We have some video of this mural that was dedicated to John Lewis in 2012. It's called Hero, and it's in honor of the now late congressman. Luckily, fortunately, he was able to get his roses while he could still smell them. He talked about what an honor it was to have this mural dedicated to him right here on the west side of Renaissance Walk at the Auburn building on Jesse Hill Jr. Drive. Lewis had been out also in this community, uh, knocking door to door, talking to people in this historic and beloved district, uh, campaigning over the years to continue to represent the people that he uh, lived amongst, that he worked alongside. It was in 1981 that he was elected to the Atlanta City Council and then he ran for Congress in 1986 in November and has been serving in the 5th Congressional District ever since. It was in one of his last interviews earlier this year that he sat down with CBS's Gail King and she talked to him about what he thought about the Black Lives Matter protests. As he has pushed for peaceful protests, he says he thought he was pleased to see so many peaceful protests still going on today from all races. Take a listen. During the 60s, the great majority of us accepted the way of peace, the way of love, as something cleansing, something wholesome about being peaceful and orderly. To stand up and with a sense of dignity and a sense of pride and, and never hate. And that is what he stood for as a man who was nonviolent but pushed for change relentlessly and tirelessly. And that fight was evidence evident even in his unfortunate health diagnosis. I was here in December when Congressman Lewis announced that he had stage four pancreatic cancer and people came out much like today offering flowers and cars and words of support, asking the congressman to fight through this. And that is what he continued to do through last night or overnight. Reporting in Atlanta, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. He said it was the toughest fight he'd ever fought. Haley, thank you so much. Our coverage on the passing of civil rights leader, Congressman John Lewis continues right now. Our Ayanna Hughes live outside the National Center for Civil and Human Rights, also known as the Civil Rights Museum this morning. Tell us about that place that holds so many special memories for the Congressman. Yes, it does. Karen, good morning. This Civil Rights Museum that's uh, right here behind me here in Atlanta, it just has many tributes inside. Unfortunately, they're closed right now, but they have many tributes inside to uh, Congressman John Lewis and all of the service and leadership that he showed, not only throughout the country, but here in Atlanta as well. Now, this center was initially, initially conceived by Joseph Lowry's wife, Evelyn Lowry, along with Juanita Abernathy, former Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young, and Congressman John Lewis, of course, each who played a role in the Civil Rights 
rights movement to grant civil rights to African Americans in the 1960s. Now, Lewis's tribute, uh, they're displayed in the Rolls Down Like Water exhibition here at the museum. His highlights include the, po the brutal police beating he encountered during the landmark Bloody Sunday March in Selma, Alabama in 1965. Now, despite that beating, he never lost sight of his activist spirit. He grew to be a towering figure of the civil rights movement. He became a member of the Atlanta City Council in 1981 and served diligently as a staple in the United States Congress. Now, let's take a listen from other leaders uh, who reflected on his life. And we talked very briefly and he was sort of struggling, uh, which was kind of unusual, you know, for John. And uh, so uh, Michael uh, informed me that uh, they were having uh, difficulties with John's health yes. and that uh, they were uncertain as to uh, what extent uh, he would be able to uh, recover. I was 17 years old and I'm standing in the back of the crowd with other students from across the South um, and I, I, you know, obviously we're waiting on Dr. King, but I saw this 23 year old young fellow standing up at the microphone and he was articulating his message. He was the youngest person on the platform and I'll never forget that. I'm deeply sad and troubled by the way the street looked today. This is the street where we march, where we play, where we had fun, where we dance but we attended church. And good trouble is what he was known to cause and the good fight is what he fought up until his last breath. Unfortunately, he did pass away uh, last night at the age of 80 from a six month battle with pancreatic cancer. So we'll forever remember John Lewis here in Atlanta. For now, we're live in Atlanta. Yanni Hughes, CBS 46 News. He said Dr. King called him the boy from Troy. Yanni, thanks so much. Welcome back. This morning we're remembering Georgia Congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis and joining us on the phone right now, former Atlanta mayor and uh, really a big part of the Buckhead Coalition right now, still very busy with them, Sam Massell. Thank you so much, Mayor Massell, for joining us this morning. I know this has been a really tough loss for you as well, the Congressman. Tell us about your history with him. Well, uh, we sort of started our civic service at about the same time. I was president of the uh, Atlanta City Council, then, then called the Board of Aldermen, and he was uh, uh, a young student <laughs> uh, getting involved in the civic service of, of his community. And uh, we, we became friends then and have remained uh, in that relationship ever since. And you said, uh, you know, when you heard the news, what were you doing? What were you thinking about this? Had you had a chance to see him before he died? Uh, no, I hadn't seen him recently. He uh, spent a lot of time in Buckhead in the early years uh, when he served on city council and, and, um, and later the Congress. And uh, actually the Buckhead Business Men's Association, which later became the Buckhead uh, Business Association, uh, endorsed him uh, when he uh, and Julian Bond were running against each other. It was an unusual act because uh, it was not, it's not a political organization. It had never endorsed anybody before or since. But he attributed uh, some of his uh, foundation for public service uh, to the uh, BBA and uh, never lost uh, sight of that friendship. He, would return to them frequently for other meetings. And um, he liked Buckhead's restaurants also. <laughs> we uh, spent more time together in the early years, but uh, he certainly made a contribution uh, to his city and, uh, and, and his country. Yes, he did. Former Macelle, the actual 53rd mayor of the city of Atlanta. We thank you so much for joining us and talking about Congressman John Lewis. Yes. He was a friend and uh, he won't be forgotten. He sure will not. Thank you again.